All right, guys, I just walked into the uh, Champaign Air Museum here where they're building the B-17. And uh, I'm going to do a little walk around here, and then we'll go try to find Randy or someone else that is willing to talk to us and uh, give us a little update on what's been going on for like the last, I guess, three or four weeks. Um, anyway, you guys can see here there's a DC-3 that's on display. I'm not sure when they got it. It's been a few years, but uh, let's go inside. You're still wait. working on those same parts, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I thought yeah. I recognized you. I moved. I was over on the other table. I think I wanted to look good. 342 of these hat channels to make to finish up for a plane. How many have you done? We're about two thirds of the way done. Oh. Now we got all the long ones to do. I'd like to have them done by the end of February. Didn't say what year though. <laughs> How long have you been working here? Oh, total number of years? I don't know. Six or seven, I suppose. <laughs> How many yeah. of these parts have you made? Oh, golly. I've probably made a third of that table full over. <laughs> Last winter, I made hundreds of these gusset plates, which that's only one style, but there's probably 10 styles that were made handmade. Clean all these up and these are made to put the stringers in so everything's got to fit here so they pass clear through to go to the next area. Basically the only way to do it is work them by hand and clean them up. Now guys, about a year ago I did a live video on the B-17 with Randy and they were building this and he explained a lot of stuff with this. This is a um, elevator half. So everything that's in light green is original. All the rest, the dark green here and here, they had to make. So this is all remade. They made them all right here. This is the, <laughs> there's four ribs right here that's uh, the light green original. There's a panel here that's inside. And obviously you can see the trim tabs all uh, made and that's, that's all new. And it looks like they're, they're starting on the other, the other side now. So it's, it's quite amazing. Light green, dark green. So that's made, all these are made. These are all remade. Uh, my name is Dave LeMay, and I've been working uh, at the CAM Museum here for about almost 10 years. So, and what we're working on today is uh, trailing edge for the uh, uh, ailerons. Um, this will, the uh, ribs will come back here. We'll have to mill this and, uh, and uh, rivet it, but we'll mill in a slot and the ribs will fit in, and then they'll get... Uh, rivet in the whole thing will be covered with cloth eventually so I have to make uh, I have to make a total of six of these in order to make enough for two ailerons so uh, this is my pattern I've got my drawings over there and I'm working on uh, materials to to uh, try and bend this up and uh, get it the right dimension okay these are off the original B17 drawings that uh, are on file at the Smithsonian that uh, we've uh, taken from microfish and put on uh, discs so they're in the computer. And uh, yeah, you can see trailing edge section and uh, it's about an inch and a third in length 
and approximately uh, 50 thousandths, or shoot, 500 thousandths to 660 thousandths is my range that uh, I can work with. So, geez, well, I worked on the trailing wire antenna. I worked on the flake, the uh, throttle controls with Fred. I don't know who, if you know Fred uh, Zirkel, but he's our electrical fella. So when I first came here to work roughly 10 years ago, I worked on the throttle quadrant and uh, doing a bunch of boring on the, on the mill and some bending of uh, uh, tubing. But uh, yeah, I have some of these made up in order to, to uh, bend this so that it uh, ends up approximately the right size. So I'll uh, form it up and then uh, uh, get it down here and taper it and then go back to the uh, brake and and put some bends in here and then bring it back in here and, and pound it down. I got a inside uh, fixture to go in there and help it uh, when I form it and then I got uh, some plastic here and then I can pound it down a little bit and if I need to Get a little bit tighter. I got a smaller piece here, and so that's basically how we're forming this. And I got to end up with a four-foot one eventually. So, <laughs> so, and this is the smaller one, which is closer to what the real shape is. So you can see what the the shape is. So I started with this one, then I went to this one to use my pieces that are a little bit larger, form it down, and then I'll go over to this one and uh, drop it in and shape it so all right guys it's quitting time here at the champagne air museum everyone's left except randy he's he's in the hot seat he, all these b-17s are calling him so uh, he's trying to answer some questions and things so he is sticking around after hours randy can you give us a quick update on the b-17 yeah we're working the wings uh inboard section this is the outboard section uh, we're doing now is tail ribs. Uh, so, yep, the leading edge we've pretty much got on and uh, got all uh, the scary stuff done. But uh, fuselage tail wheel tub is in. You talked to Dale there before and he's done. I even told him that he's got to go put the cockpit sidewalls in yet because it's a little tighter than the tail wheel. Uh, yep. About finished with the second ailerons behind us. Get a couple of closeout panels to put on it, and we'll wrap it and hang it on the wall. Okay. Um, big news next door: we're adding on, uh, putting a 60 by 120 workshop. We'll move a lot of what we got in here over there, machine shop and and stuff. We'll still keep major components over here, but get a lot of the floor hmm. space freed up. We got one airplane I haven't got in here. Yeah, the, just ran out of work, out of room. The Fairchild. Okay. Well, and the A26. The, the A26. So. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Um, I, I got to talk to a, quite a few guys while you were working. Randy's been working actually a lot today, <laughs> and he's been on the phone consulting. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You guys can actually reach out to the the museum. Yep. Any donations are much appreciated. They have hats, they have shirts. You go to the website, you know, you can, we've got a big dinner coming up in April. Uh, it's usually around 150 bucks a seat. We've got a pilot coming in who uh, is sole survivor of a ejection over Mach 1 in an F-15. Hmm. He survived, his backseater didn't. So he's coming in to talk. We've had Bud Anderson, Burt Rutan, uh, yeah, hmm. the astronaut pilot, husband and wife, Leah and uh, Rhea Sedone and uh, Hoot Gibson. Really? <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. that's a gala. That's in April. Yeah. Uh, you guys can take rides in the Champagne Gal, which is the B-25. We'll do a video on the B-25 here eventually. But uh, Spring. Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere I could do biplane rides, Champagne Gal's there giving rides also. Um, you guys can ride in B-25 right here in Urbana. But, yeah, thanks for reaching out. I'll put all those links, the website down below. Maybe put a little card or two. I tell you, the first video Randy and I did, which was a live video, is the best. 
<laughs> All right, it's you guys go see that one, and then we'll 48 keep, minutes, I think. It is. It's pretty long, <laughs> but it's very good information. If you guys want to nerd out on some airplane stuff, that is the video to watch. And I'll try to do updates and just kind of come and actually interview the guys that's working, volunteers. Yep. Uh, it's Others been talk to me. Good. Yeah. They're all involved. It's their baby. <laughs> it's their it's their baby. You're just watching over them. Well, all right. Uh, we'll see you guys later. Thanks. And until then, blue skies. Thanks, Randy. Yep. Take care. Yes. <laughs>